In 2016, at San Diego Comic-Con, the rumor was confirmed that Disney's California Adventures Tower of Terror would close, to be replaced by an attraction based on Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy film series. The announcement sparked outrage in the Disney Park community. The responses ranged from, ugh, I want to vomit, how can Joe pitch the destruction of something that makes sense to be replaced by garbage, to, I have never been on Tower of Terror myself, but let me tell you, this is the worst idea ever. Reports even came in of people booing the announcement. Other fans expressed they were done with Disney and the stupid ideas. On January 3rd, 2017, Tower of Terror closed for good after work had begun to change the iconic attraction to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. It was the end of an era for the Tower of Terror. The first US Disney attraction based on Marvel would open on May 25th, 2017. And it was awesome. Hey, the name's Rocket and I need your help. The Collector has trapped my friends, the Guardians of the Galaxy, in his weird freak show. Check it out. This is the joint we're in and we need you to help us break out. Got it? Good. Now move it! Uh, I gotta go. Sir, he's in! Buzz like you're confirming. There is indeed a neighboring park. Disney had plans to build a second theme park at Disneyland in Anaheim from the early 90s. The site was announced to become Westcott, the West Coast version of Epcot. After the troubled opening of Euro Disneyland, the planned park was cancelled. In the summer of 1995, Michael Eisner and company executives decided it would instead build a park themed to the history and culture of the state of California. This new park would focus on dining and shopping and offer an odd mix of cheap to build attractions. You got quite a little park here. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is hardly a little park, Mr. Boswick. Disney's California Adventure covers 55 acres and has 22 rides, shows, and attractions. Each one is different. On February 8, 2001, the Disney California Adventure opened to negative reviews. The word of mouth that the park just wasn't really very good had spread from annual pass previews and the crowds on opening day reflected it. Inside the park were four different districts. Golden State, Sunshine Plaza, Paradise Pier and the Hollywood Pictures Backlot, with 22 shows and attractions and 15 restaurants. A large number of off-the-shelf attractions filled the park and there was not really very much to do at all for children. The park was designed to sell food and beverage and merchandise, and you could tell. The California theme was also an odd choice for a park located in the state, which put many people off. Hiya, fellas! <laughs> Gee, I've been looking for you all day! I'm sorry, Vicky. You wanted to see us for some reason? Well, I want to give you a personal tour of Disney's California Adventure! Ooh, what do you say we start with a ride on California Screamin'? While 2001 saw over 12 million people visit Disneyland, only 5 million would make the way directly opposite to the new park. The park felt empty most days and ticket sales continued to be low. Within the first year, Disney began to attempt to fix the issues. Superstar Limo closed and the Electric Parade and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Play It were added. In 2002, the Flix Fun Fair area opened around the It's Tough to Be a Bug show and a Bugs Land aimed to fix the issue that children had nothing to do. The second year of operation would see even lower attendance than the first. The next new attraction though would bring something people would finally be excited for. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. This version of the attraction was actually designed for the Paris part, but with California Adventure in desperate need of some sort of boost to bring people in, it was fast-tracked for Anaheim. While similar in concept and theme, the actual ride system would be completely different. The exterior would be reminiscent of the Pablo Deco styles found throughout Southern California during the Golden Age of Hollywood, rather than the Spanish colonial revival of Walt Disney World. To try and save cost and space, Imagineers redesigned the ride system for the new version. Instead of two ride shafts which would travel through the building into the fifth dimension, this version would feature three. 
each its own separate ride system, meaning they can be repaired individually. Each of these shafts have the capacity to accommodate two vehicles operating from two load levels. Inside this version of the queue, the boiler room would feature two floors rather than one. This was so that while the ride vehicle is in the shaft, the other can be loaded, providing increased capacity. This version of the ride would not travel forward or backwards like the Hollywood Studios version, other than when loading into the drop shaft, which allows the use of two vehicles in one drop shaft. After you board, the elevator ascends to a fifth floor and a mirror is revealed. You had just entered the Twilight Zone. The elevator then descends to the next scene showcasing a corridor. Here in the distance was another elevator, in the place of the smashing window. The elevator at the end falls, followed by your elevator. The Californian version of the ride did not have randomized drops, and followed the same sequence each time regardless of which floor you boarded the ride on. First, two drops in blackness, followed by a rise to the top of the tower. The doors open to reveal the view outside before a few more drops of the tower, with a final drop stopping on the floor between the two load platforms. This was to make sure every ride was the same, before returning to the floor where you board it. Groundwork began on the Timon parking lot for the new attraction in September 2001, officially announced in 2002 with the ride opening on May 5th, 2004. <laughs> Over the next decade, the ride kickstarted the regeneration of Disney's California Adventure and attendance slowly began to climb. By 2007, Bob Iger announced a $1.1 billion redesign and expansion of the park to try and bring it up to the Disney standard. With a brand new entrance and multiple changes throughout, by 2016, over 9 million people were visiting the park each year. A nearly identical version of the California Tower did open up at Disneyland Paris in 2007 and still operates today. This isn't the story of Tower of Terror though. In April 2016, rumors began to circulate that a possible Guardians of the Galaxy overlay was coming for the Californian Tower of Terror, in part to remove the licensing fees paid for the use of the Twilight Zone. It was confirmed in July at the 2016 San Diego Comic-Con that the Twilight Zone would in fact be closing on January 3rd, 2017. The reaction was interesting. Let's just say slightly negative. Ranging from what in the absolute how does Guardians have to do with Hollywood? I'm looking at the concept art and it looks so out of place. Screw you, Iger. Screw you. Two, terrible decision. Looks like crap. Screw you, Disney. If you touch Walt Disney World's tower, I will revolt. Yeah, I told you it was quite negative. Even a petition was launched with 35,000 supporters to try and save the Tower of Terror. They did not. Others were excited for the change and for something new. The time frame to re-theme the attraction was short. While the ride would close in January, work had began on the exterior of the building before this. By September 2016, the Hollywood Tower Hotel sign had been removed. Hi, I'm Joe Rohde and I'm here to tell you about this exciting new addition to Disney California Adventure. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. It takes you into the world of Guardians of the Galaxy in this really immersive, exciting experience that features the really quirky and beloved characters from the film in a whole new narrative that no one's ever seen. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout will be the first Disney attraction based on Marvel comic characters in the United States. Due to the contract with Universal Parks and Resorts, the Marvel brand though is not allowed to be used as part of the rise title or advertising. All of the actors from the movie reprise their roles with James Gunn directing the scenes which involve the cast. Everybody, I'm James Gunn, the writer and director of Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm very excited because we've been here all day creating a new ride for Disney's California Adventure. The story will be based around the Collector's Fortress called the Tivan Collection, a scene in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. The main floor is built to resemble the interior of the Collector's Archive. A pre-show video plays in here with the Collector and his assistant, revealing that they have a new addition to the Tivan Collection. Today's tour. You will be allowed into my most secure inner sanctum to see in the flesh my newest acquisitions.
the guardians of the galaxy themselves. They were tricked into coming to visit as they thought that they too would be given a tour of the facility. Instead, they would be held in glass cases, electrified so they could not escape. Rocket though, of course, finds a way. To enter the facility, you have to have your biological sign scanned by raising your hands for clearance. Within the first waiting area, there are many references to the Marvel Universe and past Disney attractions. Some of which include Ultron, Cosmo the Space Dog, Adam Warlock's Cocoon, Kree Weapons, Figment from Journey into Imagination, and even the man himself, Stan Lee, as well as much more. The pre-show room is still in the same room as the Tower of Terror's library, but now it is the collector's office, where another video of him begins playing. You are now standing in my private office. I know! Right, carefully scrutinize. Each and every piece that comes to me from different parts of the galaxy, that I could have less you this guy. Hearing your incessant blathering on a constant loop was big motivation for me to escape. I go, ouch! Ow! Oh, that was not part of the plan! Rocket interrupts in audio animatronic form, entering through a vent, and hijacks a video to explain the plan for rescuing his friends. If there are issues with the animatronic, Rocket will appear on screen to hijack the spiel. You will use your access pass, your hands, to access the lift while Rocket rides on top to blow up the generator so that the Guardians, along with anything else in captivity, can escape. This room is once again filled with references, a few of which are a bellhop's hat and luggage tag from the Hollywood Tower Hotel, Loki's shackles and optical torture device, a Hydra helmet, the animatronic remains of Tom Morrow from Interventions, a hollow small world doll head, 1955 Disneyland maps and Peter Quill's Walkman, which Rocket grabs on his way out. The next and final room leads to the gantry elevators. Keep an eye out for Harold the original Abominable Snowman from the Matterhorn and Dolores the Octopus, a girlfriend of one of the bears from the Country Bear Vacation Hoedown. Seriously. After raising your hands to enter and being seated in your elevator, the collector tells you that this is the moment you've been waiting for. However, Rocket has different plans and unplugs the system and inserts Quill's Walkman, starting one of six songs with different scenarios. The lift quickly rises and Rocket unplugs the generator. The elevator accelerates up and down as Rocket tries to regain control. The following scenes can change depending on which song you have. I Want You Back by The Jackson 5 The first scenario with this song is of the Guardians jumping from their confinement only for Drax to get captured by a tentacled monster. The second scenario shows Quill kick a rat creature into the cage before being attacked by a group of them. Hit Me With Your Best Shot, Pat Benatar here the first scenario shows Quill shooing away the tentacled monster ending with both of them and Gamora running from a fleet of security and drones. The second scenario shows a giant gargoyle type monster jumping up and roaring at guests. Give Up The Funk has Quill and Gamora in the tentacles of the monster with them asking Rocket for help. The second has Quill kicking the rat like creature. Free Ride by the Edgar Winter Group has the Guardian shoot him while Baby Group pushes a red button that turns off the artificial gravity, followed by a scene showing everything floating. Burning Love by Alvis Presley features the Drax getting captured scene with the gargoyle monster scene. And finally, Born to be Wild by Steppenwolf has the Quill and Gamora scene in tentacles, followed by them running away from the drones. After a brief view of Disneyland at the top, Rocket finally restores the power and the lift drops to show the Guardians reunited with Mantis and Cosmo the Space Dog. Quill and Gamora thank you for your help, while Drax is heard asking why, because we didn't even do anything, we just sat there. <laughs> The exit into the gift shop features the sounds of the escaped creatures and a disappointed collector. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout has arrived. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Wait, let's try that again.
Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout opened on May 27th, 2017, just four months after the closure of Tower of Terror. And surprisingly, it was pretty great. Go! What are you guys still doing here? Tour's over! The cages are open and the creatures are loose! You gotta get out of here! In August 2017, Disney announced that the attraction would receive a new experience during Halloween called Guardians of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark. It would carry on the story from Mission Breakout and be offered after sunset from early September through October 31st. The storyline had Groot accidentally left behind after the escape. Rocket returns and has guests distract all the escape creatures so he can find Groot. It features a brand new song written by Tyler Bates and new scenes with Rocket and Groot. Theme parks should always be evolving and offer something new as long as they improve or offer a good new experience. An IP, even one you're not interested in, can still offer a great ride. While Tower of Terror did help the fledging park turn from terrible to okay, and will always be remembered for the fun memories it gave those who rode it over the years, offering new experiences is required to keep a park evolving, and with the addition of a Marvel land, this change was just the first step of that. Change being a good thing can be seen no more clearly than Disney's California Adventure. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout is just an overall fun attraction and it is hard to come off it without a smile on your face, even if you are a fan of the series or not. Most people expected Mission Breakout to be bad. The response to its announcement was negative, and while it may not be the best looking attraction in the park towering over the rest of the skyline looking like a sore thumb, I actually kinda prefer it to the Californian Tower of Terror. Joe Rohde created an overlay that is more family friendly, offers more rewritability, and for a short time frame is incredibly well put together, while capturing the film's spirit. The fact that Elevator is constantly moving up and down and never stops, and the short and sweet scenes feel right at home and will definitely be a great fit in the upcoming Marvel Land. Now, how would I feel if a similar experience came to the Orlando Park? If you had asked me before riding this, and I highly recommend you do, I would be firmly against it. But after all, isn't the most important aspect of a theme park to be fun? This ride made me way more excited for the Epcot ride that is coming, and if it was to come to the Orlando Tower of Terror, well I think that- Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Theme Park. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Have you been on Mission Breakout and how does it compare to the Tower of Terror for you? Also, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a full expedition on Disney's California adventure. If you would like more backstory on the Tower of Terror itself and how it works, take a look at our episode covering its creation on Expedition Hollywood Studios. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time. Uh, I gotta go.